Uh, had a horrible dream. Oh, There's this man. kid called Chadley. Oh God, it's real. Uh, my, he's escaped my dream zone. <laughs> he's he's materialized as a real man, real boy. He just got in a big old shipment of fabric softener. Oh yes. Is it strawberry flavored? Gotta get that new shimmer sponge. The one that's been on TV. Yeah, they say it works miracles. No stain too I love that Shinra has branded, ha, ha, has taken over so many things that even if you want a sponge, it is a Shinra sponge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I always thought a uh, middle manager was a Shinra sponge, but I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> also, yeah, I love the idea of buying random products from from Shinra and they're just randomly Mako infused just because that's that's like a marketing thing for them mm -hmm. infused with planet blood it's great now with more Mako Ooh, yeah uh so yeah one side oh, hey, we got a chart yeah there's charts there's charts uh yeah there's one side quest that it's still active we gotta do we gotta go to the graveyard for that old guy and pay respects to his wife it's too old to go yes. there Almost definitely monsters in the graveyard. Uh, but a couple episodes ago, we were escaping the church with Aerith, and there was a Yorb in there we couldn't get. That's true. The ghosts deny us our Yorb. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Your friend thinks I'm hot? Yeah, there's a... I couldn't find the other NPC during my playthrough here, but she's in the, the slums somewhere, but that lady that I was just talking and some lady in the slums are friends, and whenever you go see one of them, you get a little bit more of, like, them talking about their conversation they were having about how they think Cloud is hot. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to be cool, but I, I'll take hot. I'll, I'll take hot. I think hot is adjacent to cool, usually. It's pretty close. Um, unless On anything but a thermometer, it's pretty close. Yeah, unless it's like, unless you're like himbo hot, in which case I don't think himbos are cool generally. But they are popular, which is also adjacent to cool. Oh so you man, see you know we got it. There's like a diagram for this. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we could make something here. <laughs> hey there, man. You into music? I screwed up an order of discs. Sitting on a mountain of them now. Mind taking at least one off my hands? These guys even exist in Midgar? Fuck. Yeah. Like, weird way to sell your demo tape, but okay. It's yet another song for, uh, an event that won't be happening in this first game. <laughs> Actually a theme for another, uh, character that we, we won't meet until later. Or, well, later next game, I mean, but... Everyone's just talking about their crushes today, I guess, huh? I, you can talk to me. I'm, I'm, I'm hot. <laughs> Why the hell is everyone shitting all over Avalanche? People can hear you. So you're saying that people in Avalanche are are cool? <gasps> you're cool with them? Ooh. Uh. The plan was supposed to be foolproof. Biggs, Wedge. Hope everybody's safe. I like coming across that extra conversation they have just so that you know that, yeah, there are some other random people who are helping Avalanche in some way and actually Get know about these plans. Right <laughs> it's not just the main Avalanche crew alone. You know what I heard? Once you become a regular, you'll let me try the Would you like a bowl of marsh stew? The perfect blend of sweet and spicy. It's made with real marsh. Ooh. Ooh. Some of the fake ingredients, uh, for, for foods that people talk about in this game are actually names of, like, towns and stuff from earlier Final Fantasies. Oh. Yeah, it's it's spelled different uh, in this game, but Marsh is, uh, I remember correctly, it's been a while, a city from Final Fantasy VI. A little bit later in the video, I have some... Uh, more like comparison shots from the original game, but something like while well, a lot of people talk about how this game like really matched the tone of the original really well, which was a thing a lot of people were worried about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do like upon like especially going through the this game with you, there Aww. is some uh, there there I, I have noticed more changes in like the tone of the game, 
And the probably the biggest thing is because there's a bigger focus on the people of Midgar and especially the people who live in the slums, uh, the the tone and like the the vibe of walking around the slums is a little different because in the original game it's a little more like rough and tumble. Like everyone's a little bit more hostile and mean and kind of like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everyone seems more strung out. Um, <laughs> everything's a little more grimy, too. I think mostly just because of, like, the attitude of the public in general, whereas, um... This remake, because there's so many more people you can listen to and stuff, and there's so many more people who are just clearly just trying to live out, like, as much of a normal life that they can get, despite being down here, everything's got, like, a little bit more of, like, a hopeful attitude to it. Yeah, yeah. Which I kind of like because there's so many, um, like, cyberpunk or dystopian things where it's like, hey, are you, like, a person who lives on the underside of the city or, you know, you're, you're poor or whatever? Well, everything sucks and everything's shitty all the time. <laughs> Everyone's mean and an asshole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I like this new tone they're going for. When even in... Even reality teaches us that if there is a place where people live, there will be kids playing soccer. Yeah. There there will be people trying to smooch. There, there will... Yeah. Yeah. Like it's... Um, and you pointed this out too uh, several episodes ago that like this game, you know, is, is kind of juggling several different tones throughout. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the reasons why I like this, along with, you know, stuff like Metal Gear Solid is because, well, it has a lot of serious stuff in it. While Metal Gear is maybe more cartoony, uh, being able to show that, you know, there's a breadth of tones and, like, lives mm -hmm. and, and experiences in this world makes it feel more real to me. But... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, flashbacks. Flashbacks. Yeah. Welcome they, to the 90s. Oh, uh, yeah. Something I really like about the original game is, well, this game, one of the big things about this game was that it conveyed, like, scale. It also had kind of an inconsistent art style that was interesting, like, this church is really tiny on the yeah. outside, but it's huge on the inside. And this happens a lot throughout the game, where it's like, here, it's like, oh, look how huge the central pillar is and all that. And, like, you, you mm -hmm. feel like you're in this big city, but... The Especially games... considering we just saw a cloud is 24 feet high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like... While I really love the, the remake and what it does, I think it's more like a companion piece to the original and not a replacement. Uh, mm -hmm. Because they still feel very different from each other in a lot of ways. Like, here the Sector 5 slums are a lot more grimy, but they do keep some big details from the original, like that big TV. And also, this is home to the infamous This Guy Are Sick mistranslation. <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh. This guy are sick. Uh, this aspect is not here in the remake, but there's a tube with a sick man inside. Uh, this guy in the remake is the man of the black cloak we met, like, previous episode. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the guy with the number two tattoo. The tattoo? The tattoo. But yeah, like, Aerith's house and stuff, almost one-to-one -one in the remake. The, they know when there's... Like, when the people who made this game, they were pretty good at knowing, like, okay, here's the areas that have to be almost one-to-one -one or people are going to be upset. Yeah. <laughs> they knew where they could take liberties and get away with it, I think. And it turns out the answer to that question is everything. Every single screen or Just, somebody somewhere is going to be upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get into the... The graveyard, which I really want to know how that child, the the little Mugu child, managed to get the key to the graveyard. He asked a ghost. Oh man, those damn ghosts! So that those children previous episode gave Cloud a bat with a lot of nails driven into it. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It's a very average attack-wise, both physical and magic attacks. Uh, the nail bat's gimmick is that while it might not do a ton of damage normally. Uh, it's a critical hit based weapon. Ah. It boosts your luck. It's got a lot of stuff that increases your chance for critical hits, either just by default or by, uh, like, you get a big boost if you're low on health, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Nail Bat starts off with zero materia slots. 
you gotta you gotta do a lot of upgrading to give it any slots at all. Well, what would a kid be doing with materia? It's, Think about it. It's true. And also, there's big poisonous bugs in here, so uh, I bought a second star pendant earlier, so we can make both Cloud and Aerith immune to that stuff. But yeah, the nail bat uh, is Cloud's joke weapon. The original game, every character had a singular joke weapon. The Cloud's the only one that gets a joke weapon in this first game. Hopefully they do the rest of them throughout the series, but mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. like Tifa's joke weapon was a gardening glove. Uh, Barrett's joke weapon was instead of having a gun arm, he had um, a, an arm that would shoot uh, a boxing glove out in a big springy spring. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Another character's joke no weapon is like a mop or something like that. Uh, and they in the original game, none of them were like actually that useful because they all had zero materia slots and you couldn't upgrade that stuff in the yeah. original. Um, we got big bugs. They're like the big bugs we fought before, but a little worse, they can also put you to sleep now. I don't like the little twitches that, that the hands do. I know. The little feelies on the end of the hands. This is like a... Those are unpleasant. Yeah, this is like a uh, animation thing they do f for bugs for a lot of Final Fantasies for a while. They just have those gross little twitches. I hate them. Oh yeah, new ability. Uh, disorder, when you use this attack, it also makes you switch your combat stance. So now we're in Punisher mode. Ah. And the Nail Bat has a different Punisher mode attack. Instead of a combo string, uh, a heavy attack combo string, you get this home run swing. Hell yes. Uh, and it, if you hit people with it, very frequently, uh, it'll knock them back, and it will also instantly pressure them. It's pretty it's fun. It's pretty decent form. You yeah. Know. I wouldn't use it in a game, but like, you know, showing off, batting yeah. cages, yeah. Uh, and the disorder attack is different depending on what stance you're in when you use it. So <laughs> if you use disorder while you're in Punisher stance, you do a stronger attack that hits twice, and it also hits stuff behind you. So yeah, d disorder is it... Ability that I find that was pretty easy to ignore the first time I played the game, but uh, after I started using it more in this playthrough, just so I could show it off, it's like, hey, this is actually pretty good if you're <laughs> building Cloud out uh, the right way. I'm a big fan of disorder. Love that just disorder. Gonna, gonna turn my desk upside down. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, I, I really got inspired after I saw that uh, Down with Authority graffiti. It really inspired me. <laughs> I love oh, the home run it's swing. Good. It's really That's good. Satisfying. So the home run swing, uh, it's not always going to knock enemies back and pressure them, but it has a really high chance of doing that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Anytime you you do the home run swing and like it very briefly has like a little like flashing effect or like a little red flash comes out of it, you know it's going to do that. Uh, it works uh, on bosses too. Is the knockback and stagger combined, or is there a chance to do one without the other? Uh, it's combined. Okay. Um, although I will say, like, if you... So if you hit an enemy that's really big, there's no way you can knock them back, but they'll still get hit by the pressure effect. Okay. So, like, if you're fighting a gigantic boss, it's still useful just for pressuring them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Disorder is one of those attacks that's really good to put, like, on the shortcuts. Just so you can pop it out whenever. Oh yeah, also I put uh, ice elemental attacks on Aerith's uh, staff. So she's got like a little ice crystal growing on the tip of her staff. Yeah, yeah, and on the faces of the bugs. Yeah. Oh, hey, you uh, got a cactuar. One of the other baby DLC summons. Bring it. Look at him go! He's great! Um, his basic attack is completely useless. He does one damage. He just like does little cool flips. <laughs> next to them, basically. Um, I don't think anything's useless if it's cute. I mean, it's true. there is some utility. It's pretty cute. There, there is utility in being a cool little guy, you know? Yeah. I, I think style is substance, actually. <laughs> so he, is, he only has one ability, but it's called A Thousand Needles. It always does the exact same amount of damage, uh, and it gives two status effects to enemies. It slows them and it poisons them. So that's actually pretty okay. good. All right. 
this is kind of the gimmick of cactuars. Normally, they're not summons. They're like rare enemies that you you can find mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in most Final Fantasies where they're really hard to hit. They're very fast. They have high evasion usually, um, and they do static amounts of damage. So, well, it's not actually accurate in this game. Usually, if you see 1,000 needles or 10,000 needles, it's going to do that exact amount of damage no matter what. Good <laughs> job. Yeah, that's his his ultimate attack is 10,000 needles. Uh, it's really it doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but it fills up the stagger gauge super fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, here's another thing I haven't used for Cloud. Uh, so if you hold down the attack button while you're in Punisher mode, instead of doing his spin attack, he'll slam his sword into the ground, and if it hits an enemy, it briefly gives him. And you can see at the bottom right th that like fangs icon. Uh, that's the Berserk status effect. It only lasts for 10 seconds on Cloud. But uh, when Cloud is Berserk, his uh, defense gets lower, but his attacks do more damage. Um, so it's really good to hit enemies with that right when they're about to get staggered, so you can do even more damage to them. And having fangs, he becomes an even sexier anime babe. Hey, you want to say a prayer too? No thanks. I think I'm an atheist. <laughs> Sorry, Aerith, but my cold, logical, analytical brain does not believe in God. I'm really grateful for what you did. Here's your reward. I owe him a lot. Maybe more than I can ever repay. And now, I owe you a lot, too. I know it's not much, but... This man is still known as Scared Man. <laughs> so I think that's just his default state. your wife. And we took care of those creatures. Oh, that's such a relief to hear. I can't tell you how much it was weighing on my mind. To have strangers pray near my wife. <laughs> to be able to visit her grave again. With my bad back and my legs, my whole body's a mess, frankly. I... I didn't think I could make it past I'm just a big old garbage dump these days. This guy are also sick. <laughs> Still, I've got to face facts. Creatures or no, I can't keep making these trips. Don't say that. I've got to move on. Young ma'am, are you are you single? <laughs> but I just told you about my legs. Why don't you just give it back? Okay. It'll cost you 5,000 gil, though. 5,000? It's always money with you people. <laughs> Fine. I won't ask you for anything else. I'll take your damned key and give it to the boy. <sighs> it's downright depressing. What is the world coming to these days? Good job, Cloud. Ray, you made it, you fixed it. You made it better. You're a real dick, you know that? <laughs> Not on the bright side, it seems he's all fired up again. Money, that's all you The scared man calling Cloud a dick reminds me that there is a small dialogue thing I forgot to get back in the Sector 7 slums. The weapons dealer, if you talk to him more before, while well, he's still mad at you, uh, he'll call Cloud a little bitch. <laughs> I don't know if you knew, but he used to offer free lessons to all the street kids in the neighborhood. And yeah, I was one of those street kids. Yeah, this is, this is the beginning of Cloud trying to help people more by being an asshole to make them do the right thing. <laughs> That's his way of helping people. Uh, but hey, we got some cool uh, Hot Topic gear from the scared man. Hell yes. It's just it's just better armor. Uh, I'm glad that while they, they added like the ability to upgrade your weapons and stuff, that the armor is still mostly just like, hey, this one's better, mostly. <laughs> like, because I feel like having to get more in depth with the armor and upgrade that shit too would just be a little too much. <laughs> like, management of items? I don't know. It's also funny, uh, depending what order you're doing these quests, like, after you do, like, two, four, and six quests, Aerith will talk to you about stuff. If you complete that quest at a certain point, after you, like, make them all mad and stuff, Aerith will be like, isn't it nice to help people? <laughs> uh, you wouldn't happen to be a certain merc that's become the talk of the town? Yep. People are always talking about me. I'm and David. my relative temperature. No more than a humble reporter with the daily buzz. Ah, uh, that rag? The one that's always printing awful rumors about the slums? On the contrary, my dear. We strive to raise awareness of the plight of our undercity brethren. 
we seek a better future for everyone, rich and poor. Where you don't have now, to hammer friends, nails into bats I because of giant scorpion monsters. <laughs> services for a trifling matter. Are you familiar with the mysterious and notorious bandit known as the Angel of the Slums? She delivers written declarations to her victims, usually Shinra associates, before divesting them of their valuables. Oh, she sounds pretty Everyone cool then. Everyone knows her. <laughs> Everything she steals, she gives to the poor and needy. I'm hiring you to kill yes, Robin she's Hood. she's got a knack for public relations. Very popular down here as a result. Nevertheless, she is a criminal and a threat to the public order. I've made it my mission to unmask the villain. But the locals have been uncooperative and uncommunicative, to put it. How do you know she wears a mask? My identity hmm. as a reporter has been exposed. My sources have all deserted me. Which brings me to you. Wearing the press the badge on your might, the <laughs> might have given you away too, dude. Either that or his introduction. <laughs> I'll welcome any and all information pertaining to the so-called Angel of the Slums. <laughs> Hello! I work for a tabloid! You there, child! <laughs> I'll pay you five gil if you'll expose the, the people helping your community. Let's talk to some gossipy old people. Hell yes. They've got to they gotta have info, right? Why, hello! What is it? The guardian angel of the slums? Such a mysterious figure. Always talked about, but never seen by anyone. The angel gets in and out without being noticed and always leaves a calling card. Maybe a magician. No, no, All right, no we're looking magic. for it's a magician. Hmm. Rumor has it that the angel is a witch. A if magician rumors, witch. Hmm. I've heard that it's actually a monster. A inside. monstrous magician well, witch. It's yeah. all yeah, coming it's together. It's, it's three hedgehog pies in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> they can I'm cast fire spells. That's technically ma a magician. Is that all you needed? If you want to hear about the latest rumors, I'd be happy to share. Got any gossip about the hot guy in town? Here he's pretty hot. Oh, you look important. You doing, Hell yes. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you again, Murray. That's one of them cast Good from Monster Hunter, too, but well. without ears. I heard you found yourself a funny new friend. Cloud, meet Murray. She knows everything there is to know about the slums. Murray, meet Cloud. He's a former soldier and super strong. Mm. Yeah, I'm level 18. The kids have been talking about you. I mean, a lot of my strength comes from either my weapons or, or other equipped no, items, but the <laughs> they're really heavy. I could pick them up at least. I am. <laughs> I'm a lover of the whispered word. Not that it's any real secret, considering how chatty the Shinra mutt's been. You don't talk about I'm stamp like that. Reporter. I'm doing it for myself. Call it curiosity, whatever. Oh, could it this lady really must be an expert in gossip so to have figured others. out that he's looking for information it so since he asked I'm for it four <laughs> feet away. But I need a Incredibly good I hearing. You. Why don't you wait with that reporter of yours? Or she left bugs all over the city. <laughs> I don't know. I'll race you there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> win. I'm gonna win. Here I go. <laughs> Okay, but trade backpacks, so, see how it goes. Uh. Have you tried talking to Marae at all? She told us that she had some information to share. Marae? As in THE Marae? The town gossip? I chased her for days begging for info, but she wouldn't give up a single scrap! Sounds like so a pretty bad gossip, then. Yeah. Talk. This old bird... <laughs> we asked nicely. Heart, that's all. Then quickly, before you have another, tell us! What do you know about the notorious angel of the slums? Has she struck again? Is that it? I don't know anything about that, but I do know where her hideout is. The heaven of the slums. <laughs> now Ooh. that's a scoop! Where is it? Tell me! Deep in the scrap, at Lookout Point. Hardly anyone goes out there these days. It's the perfect place for a criminal to hold up. This dude is going to be Lookout eaten point. by eight Damn monsters. <laughs> right now. But before you go, I should warn you about this rumor I heard. About a terrible fiend that's claimed the angel's hideout as its lair. Oh, quite large. Lots of teeth. Always hungry. I don't know about you, but I'd not go anywhere near that thing. Oh, well... Uh... I love his mildly curious face. Yeah. Well, a good reporter knows never to take foolish risks. Uh, plan first, then act. That's every respectable journalist's motto. 
If it's a plan, I thought it was don't give up your sources, sir. <laughs> It's different in Midgar. So, my good Fact check it things it might might be a good thought. It would be lovely if you investigated Lookout Point for me. Damon is absolutely a guy who point deep is going to like chill for like brain pills or something. This is what we need to find out. Damon had a blog in 2003, broke one story, and has been on all the cable news <laughs> stations since. <laughs> He's done nothing of use. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it's unintentional, but the look of that guy absolutely <laughs> nails that type of dude. <laughs> like, like, his personality is a little different than what those guys usually are, because they're a little bit more, um... I don't know. They're, they're a different kind of stupid, I guess, <laughs> than, than what that guy is. But I don't know. I like this quest just because Damon sucks, and it, it, it feels like someone who wrote this or had a part in this was just like, oh, that type of guy? Yeah, fuck them. He's got Dan Rather's phone number. He's never called it. <laughs> Dan Rather did not give it to him, but he's got it, and he wants you to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, these crates keep growing back. I know, who keeps putting... So I'm imagining there must be, in at the very tippy top of these junk piles, just a fuckload of crates, and they just keep rolling downhill. I so, think it's fungal. They, they just grow. Oh, man, yeah. Crate avalanche. Midgar has a crate in front of <laughs> Wonder how many people act, like from the slums get hurt on a daily basis from crates falling on them. <laughs> So something you pointed out on Twitter, actually, like a few weeks ago that mm -hmm. I never really had thought about is because uh, I'm very intelligent and uh, uh, clever. It's and, true. Uh, observant, you might say. You might say observant. I would say that <laughs> every time we do like let's play one of these games, you always point out something. It's like, oh, that's a good point. I never <laughs> thought of that. Uh, but no, you point out that like the um, you made a comparison to uh, Beyond Good and Evil's world building in this games. Yeah, yeah, the, the, I think they're aiming for, for the same sort of uh, uh, feeling, but with, you know, a whole lot of years of, of uh, uh, technical development and, and never investment in uh, causing the, the, the difference between them. Yeah, and I never really really thought about that, but they are quite similar in, in that regard. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the way you seamlessly go from, okay, here, here's a dungeon... Uh, quote unquote, to here's just people living their lives, and you can watch them going about their business, and they chat, and yeah, as events change the world, their routines change. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, this monster doesn't have teeth, I think, but it is pretty big. If you just add, uh, yeah, a few generations worth of uh, uh, processing power and a thousand pages of script, you basically <laughs> yeah. get Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah. So yeah, th this guy is a bigger version of the, the smoggers we fought before, but he's, he mm -hmm, works a little mm -hmm. differently. Uh, his big wrecking ball arm is a target you can hit, but if your physical attacks Ooh. hit it, you just bounce off of it. Oh, no. Um, and you can't really fill up its its stagger gauge much unless you're attacking the wrecking ball with magic. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it fill up a lot quicker. I love how shiny it is, or, or how shiny it used to be, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Combine just like Aerith's basic magic attacks with like a lightning elemental, you can stagger it a lot quicker. It can spew out two different types of like smog in the ground. There's that red smog, and then there's also kind of like a bluish white. Um, the red one, if you hit it, uh, silences you, so you can't use magic. And the other one here, uh, if you walk into it, it'll stun you. Mm -hmm. And it can cover like a lot of the battlefield with that stuff. So you're saying when Aerith says here, that's a magic word that, that makes little so. magic balls appear. Yeah. Uh, also, all the grunting is magic words. Yeah. She, see, this is why Aerith is the most experienced magic user, because she doesn't even have to say magic puns to make the magic come out. 
<laughs> Everyone else has to say like puns. She like does ice sometimes. To meet you or whatever. Yeah, she does sometimes, but I think it might just be for fun at this point, or just showing off. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's always good to remember your fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Aerith's uh, uncharged Tempest attack, where she just shoots, like, three little magic balls all at once. Um, that never does much damage. It doesn't really fill up your gauge much either, but uh, it's really good for filling up the stagger gauge fast, especially if they're weak to magic or whatever element she's got. Because mm -hmm. you're hitting them with so many elements, like rapid fire. Okay. I'm also purposefully, like, trying to stagger this guy over and over with Aerith just so I can show off her limit break because when you <laughs> when you get Aerith you don't get into too many combat uh, encounters where you're gonna get a limit break with her because they end pretty quickly but uh, yeah her limit break is healing wind just like in the original uh, it's just a big healing AoE uh, it's not like a full heal but it's, it's pretty decent yeah she is the uh, at least so far, the only party member with limit breaks that aren't just do big damage. <laughs> <laughs> do big number. The guardian angel of the slums will collect your offering on behalf of the poor. This must be one of her calling cards. I don't see anything else interesting. Let's head back and tell him what we found. It looks like she tried to pick the pocket of a giant robot. <laughs> <laughs> robot didn't have pockets, so I'm not sure how it went down. Yeah. She took the other wrecking ball Believe arm. Believe it, you found one of her calling cards! This is the genuine article, I'm sure of it, pinned by the angel herself! Hmm. One of so my friends is a is handwriting analyst. Warnings. <laughs> it's an incredible find! Oh, was that all? Hold on. Looks like there's something else. A message. It Do says you are a putz. Sniffing around. I was planning to teach you a lesson you would never forget. However, by the grace of your mercenary friend, you were spared that lesson. Oh, it does say he's but a putz. Next time cool. he might not be around to save you. You would be wise to watch your step. Not just a message from the angel. A warning. If the Merc here hadn't bailed you out, that fiend in the scrap would have ripped you to shreds. <sighs> Sorry about that, friend. Here I was, just trying to help you out. But instead, my kindness almost got you violently killed. Now, now. <laughs> no harm, no foul, right? In any case, I hope this narrowly averted tragedy won't discourage you from sharing information with me in the future. Hey, everybody! The angel left another calling card! She's gonna rip off Don Corneo! It's about damn time! Don Corneo's no easy mark! I can't wait to see how this goes down! Imagine Excuse how bad the lip flaps are that they're not even <laughs> showing them. Yeah. So much for my reward. I, I like, uh... Here, why don't you take this? I like that Sector 5 oh, is a place no where you can just, like, poke Let your head out the window and go like, hey, this guy's gonna get fucked up, and everyone's just like, yeah, fuck him! <laughs> Hate that guy! Am I right? Well done, I mean, Mr. Why are they even watching you TV when all the good stuff is reputation. just shouted from the rooftops? Yeah. As people dangle their feet and we probably ought set to really poor day. examples for the children. Getting late, huh? You've been working so hard you lost track of time. Had to. The pace sucked. Because they didn't know if you were worth it yet. But now they do. Come on, let's go home. Whoop. Oh, not Whoop. a cue. <laughs> I'm, and I'm, now we can come. I'm what? waiting for, speaking of all this, like, the pay sucked freelance work, I'm just waiting for an RPG to come out where uh, the EXP stands for exposure and the stat does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want that to happen. <laughs> hey, weird kids. <laughs> Hello, strange hey, children. Like Weirdest kid. The secret weird child village. So yeah, we got all these different books here that you can buy, uh, and these mm -hmm. give additional skill points to each party member. I just want to power up Aerith more, so we're going to get one of her books. That's a Star Wars book. That that book is a Star Wars. You can't fool me. It looks like a Star Wars book. 
yeah. Each book you buy gives uh, that party member an extra 10 skill points, so it's essentially the same as if they had leveled up twice. Thanks, you Ooh. guys. I've got a whole mountain of Moogle medals now. Soon I'll be able to make everyone here super happy. That's wonderful. So, like Mog the Moogle, you'll be able to make all our hopes and dreams come true? Not just yours, Koopa. The wishes of every single person in the slums. It's a lot of wishes. Is there a wish for you to go away? <laughs> Lots of people in Midgar love to collect Moogle medals, you know. They'll pay anything to get their hands on more. I'm using the money to set up more shops all throughout the slums, Koopa. I'm giving jobs to the other kids and making life better for everyone here. And that's how I'll make everyone We're saving happy. the world through child that's labor. Woo! It, Koopa. And I've got extra happiness for you two. So what's to stop us? That sounds like a threat. Mm -hmm. He pulls out a gun. Uh, Moogle magic, Koopo? Next time, keep your plans to yourself. Thanks, you guys. By working together, I know we can make the world a happier place. <laughs> Hooray! Yeah, like, Moggy sound, you know, is happy right now, but those kids are going to unionize, and it's going to be a lot of trouble. <laughs> Look, I absolutely support all your goals. I just don't think it's right for us at this time or ever. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, since we got extra points for, for Aerith here. So when you're in battle in this game, your MP actually does slowly regenerate, but it's very slow. It's like mm -hmm. one point every like five or ten seconds, something like that. But some weapons like this one here do have upgrades where you can increase the MP regeneration by a lot. Hell yes. Um, that's it's pretty nice. It's, it's pretty useful in in boss fights or any any harder fights where sometimes you can just actually just run around and block for a little bit and then hey you've got enough MP to heal again or something. Yeah, yeah. Until your hyperactive cactus comes out and saves the day. Yay! Uh, you can also like have your weapons automatically upgrade, you know, based on attack or defense or like balance between the two. Um, hmm, okay. If you're just playing the game, you know, just kind of casually and chilling, you don't want to worry about this stuff too much, you can just do one of those. And honestly, it's, it works out pretty well because uh, all those auto upgrade things, especially if you pick balanced, uh, prioritize materia slots first. So uh, it, it's pretty good at picking out like good upgrades for you. And again, it's like if you ever screw up, think, think you've screwed up your Chadley. If you ever think you've screwed up your upgrades, you can also just go to Chadley and reset your upgrades and mm -hmm. dole them out again. Also, I forgot to go into the the leaf house over there, but we'll have another chance later on to look inside there. I would like to see uh, uh, a total skill point makeover from Chadley, just because I wonder what he says about it. Yeah, I, I'll have to have to check that out. Oh, maybe this is the hot guy. <laughs> Do you take work for money? Are we both hot guys or are you the only hot guy? Hello, Aerith. What do you want? Haven't seen him before. He your new boy toy? He's my bodyguard, if you must know. Wait a minute. Those eyes. Is he the one who beat up Reno? And what if I am? Need to cross my T's, dot my I's, that's all. Do you take elocution lessons from my friend Barrett? <laughs> Cloud, leave him be. Rude's not a bad person, really. No, I'm Just not bad. <laughs> kind of uncouth. But like it or not, I sometimes have to do bad things. Hmm. Did you forget to wash your hands? Is that what you're saying? Don't take it personal. <laughs> also, it's fun to have the nail bat and cutscenes. are all the same. <laughs> all bark, no bite. You're one to talk. You need to get back. Stay back. <laughs> So yeah, Rude is, I guess, the Tifa of the Turks. He's all punches. <laughs> He's Turkfa. Uh, yeah, and just like uh, Reno, their original designs, very loose-fitting suits. <laughs> Real baggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's weak to wind. Uh, 
and he, uh, something fun that they do with Rude that is, is staying the spirit of the original game. Rude, the way he fights is different depending on who he's attacking because it's based on, like, pre-established relationships he has with some characters that we don't know about you. yet. Uh -huh. Like, he clearly knows Aerith in some regard already. Um, yes. And he doesn't really want to hurt her too much, so all of his attacks are, like, homing sleeping powders just to take her out of the fight. He does do that fucking crazy kick at her, though. Um, <laughs> he can grapple her and, like, karate chop her in the neck to make her pass out for a little bit. Rude. Well, yeah. Rude. Very rude. Okay. But meanwhile, he wants he will actually wants to fuck up Cloud, so he does way more um, like grappling attacks like this on Cloud only. I'll show you what I can do. So and he also, for the most part, Response. only wants to attack Cloud, and he'll only go after Aerith if she keeps hitting him a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, the wind spell. If you hit enemies with Look it, at him go! Yeah, if, <laughs> Look if at you, him go! If you hit enemies with a wind spell and they're light enough, they actually get pulled toward the person who cast the spell. And that's fun to do Ooh. with Aerith because he can pull enemies towards her and then combo that uh, with the Sorceress Storm, which is that short range magic attack. Also, the bat works on him. <laughs> Here it comes. Shit. Let's do this. There we go. Yeah. Go on. And his head looks like a softball, so it's perfect. <laughs> it's it's perfect for, for practice, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you had enough yet? No, I don't believe that I have. Just stop it. Man, it's my job. Oh, also, I love this move. He so only does this with Cloud, but he fucking picks him up and look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you do actually have to avoid Cloud, because if Aerith gets hit with them, she takes a lot of damage from that. Uh, but this remake adds in some, um, like, little jokes or, uh, like, character details that were only added in further extended media. One of those being the gag that Rude has multiple pairs of shades with him at all times. <laughs> so if they ever get broken in the later stuff or in this remake, he always has a new pair to put on. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got a bandolier of shades. Yeah. He looks like that rack in CVS yeah. reading glasses. <laughs> yeah, in the second phase of his fight, he starts adding a lot of, like, uh, kind of like Final Fantasy Tactics style monk moves where he can, like, do long range punches by, like, doing those ground pound explosions and stuff. <laughs> My turn. And he also has this thing here, uh, he'll pull his guard up, and if you attack him from the front too much, uh, he'll counter you, and that's well, he'll, he'll do that thing where he, he tosses Cloud around. <laughs> Although if you hit him with attack hard enough, you bring him to his knees, he'll only be able to block attacks, but he can't counter attack. And he takes full damage from behind, I think, too, so. Need help? I'll, I'll do what I can. You'll see. Here! But we'll see more of the actual character interactions later uh, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. Reno and Rude, both Turks. Uh, wow, Reno and Rude. There's a pretty sizable shipping fa <laughs> faction for them on the internet. Wow. I, I don't know if it's the biggest, like, shipping fandom in Final Fantasy VII, but it feels like it, at least. Really? <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> Please. Just leave us alone. You know I can't do that. <clears throat> I don't know, it sounds like they won. Yeah. Hey there, partner. I'm sure you're having the time of your life, but we're needed on standby for a job at something about Sector 7. So get your ass back here now. Understood. Imagine having to answer to, to Reno. <laughs> that fucking suck. <laughs> that does so. suck. Go home and stay there. 
You know I can't do that. The plot demands otherwise. <laughs> yeah, some other, like, gags with uh, Rude that were added in later things, mainly the movie, uh, is... While he's, like, a cool dude, it's pretty easy to own him and, and just make him just, like, speechless. Uh, and also the... Somebody getting fucked up in a fight and then their phone starts ringing with the victory theme. That's from the movie as well. <laughs> Basically, for the Wait most part, if they ever pay homage to the movie or any of the extended stuff, so far it's mostly been the things people universally like. So <laughs> and not the things people think are dumb. Ooh, there's butterflies. It's pretty nice. There's little wispy leaves. <laughs> just, just leaves. <sighs> Can we finish the scene? I just want to get that orb. Aerith, how long has that plorb been there for and you didn't tell me? Uh, you talking to the... Shh. So, yeah, it was that kind of day. These flowers look sick. <laughs> Aerith, have you been... <laughs> Let's go. Shouldn't keep Mom waiting. Hey, what'd they say? Good they said you have to guys. shoot me and then they'll all turn red? I don't know. Press the square button, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. They didn't say a word. But, you know... Uh, never mind. It's not like you'd believe me, after all. Hey, you convinced him about the ghosts. Yeah. Probably not. Tell me anyway. Really? Yeah. It won't be much longer now. The flowers, they... They have something important to tell us. Is it about nitrogen? Because every time I talk to a flower, it's all about with nitrogen us. with them. Least, Please. That's the feeling I get. Nitrogen. But before they can, there's a final step that has to be taken. Otherwise, we won't hear them. Maybe I should just give up. Honestly, it's what I do best. Could have fooled me. From what I've seen, you're no quitter. Well, today's special. That's why I've been working my butt off. Uh, what's so special about it? It's the day I found my husband. <laughs> okay, time to go. Learn to talk to her. Did the flower say anything? Uh, good work today, guys? <laughs> That's the spirit. Okay, but really, I want that ore really bad. Real, real bad. And also, just like when we did a bunch of side quests with Tifa in Sector 7, uh, this is a story event that only happens if you do all the cutscenes. Or, uh, oh. all the side quests, yeah, rather. Yeah. Alright, time to go have dinner with your mom, who seems a little upset that I'm here, but... <laughs> I'll just try to ignore that and have a normal You're dinner. You're in already? Yeah, we ran out of yeah, side quests! That's enough for one day. <laughs> We did all the things, and you talked to me about what flowers say. <laughs> I'm tired. I want some soup. <laughs> Where have you two been? Uh, I've been worried sick. Sorry. We got a little sidetracked. You killed a lot of bugs and a big Dinner's robot ready, today, Mom. In case you're wondering. Ah, great. But before we sit down, I want you to make up the guest room. Gotcha. Take a load off, okay? Like she made up what the flowers say? Hmm? <laughs> 
You want you want her to pretend there's a guest room? <laughs> Sorry, Cloud. You have to sleep in the closet. I mean, a lot of soldiers uh, are in the closet, so it makes sense. Judging by those eyes, I'm guessing you're a soldier. Ex-soldier. I hate to ask, but would you leave tonight without any fuss, no questions? You boys made a trade, a normal life, for power. You can't have it both ways. I'm back! Good! Now, I hope you're hungry. Starving, right? Nothing in my contract said not having a girlfriend! No! <laughs> Did you really think it was a coincidence that the only other soldier we know is dating his bike? <laughs> I've never been so proud. The man you've become? Women must be hounding you day and night. Not really. You know, there's all kinds of temptations in the big city. I'd feel a lot better if I knew you'd found a good girl. One who'd make sure you didn't get into trouble. I can take care of myself. An older, more mature girl. I could keep you on the straight and narrow. And tell you when you're being a silly goose. That's the perfect type for you, I'd say. Gosh, Mom. I'm not a goose, I'm an ex-soldier. Just make my mac and cheese, gosh. I want the Cheetos mac and cheese. I want the Ninja Turtles mac and cheese. Why don't they make the gargoyle spaghettios and meatballs anymore? <laughs> they tasted better, I swear. It was yeah. they tasted different. I don't understand my welcome. Why doesn't planters make the PB crisps anymore? They're really good. <laughs> What happened to Dunkaroos? <laughs> I thought it was the 90s. It's baby nuts fall. Fuck you, baby nut. Yeah, damn it. Baby nut really was the harbinger of everything that had to come this year, <laughs> wasn't it? So we gotta sneak out without waking up Aerith. Uh, this was also a stupid little mini game from the original game. In the original, it was just like there were hidden, like, creaky boards in the floor. You just had to walk around. But mm -hmm. now, uh, for some reason, this hallway is very dirty and there's a bucket what right in front doing? of your feet when you start. Uh, uh, nothing. Did you have a bad dream? Don't worry. You'll feel much better in the morning. And I promise to take you straight home. Uh, okay. <sighs> Please don't let her hear me again. Yeah, no creaky floorboards. It's just a very messy hallway with buckets everywhere. There's <laughs> <laughs> buckets of buckets. Like, it, it's so messy up here when it wasn't before that. I think Aerith did this on purpose, and I'm honestly surprised that she didn't, like, put cornflakes underneath this, uh, <laughs> this rug here so that she would know if I was coming through or not. <laughs> There's razor wire outside that window. That's why he doesn't even try uh, it. Yeah. Uh, also, if you do, like, start running into these stools or buckets, uh, the game does start, like, removing them, so it's easier on further attempts to get out. You're leaving? So, how do I get to Sector 7? It's simple enough. Just cut through Sector 6. It isn't exactly oh. safe, but you should be okay. It's a fucking Same pie, Cloud. Come on. <laughs> Go in one Promise of two me. directions, and you'll, you'll probably talk get to there. Earth again. Please. You got it. Thank you. I'm sorry. There's a train network cloud. Why are you asking me? <laughs> and then you kick a bucket and she just teleports out of her room. Oh, damn it. She's already hiding in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> Aerith, you're clingy. I'm not entirely sure why yet. I'm just a huge dumb hunk. I'm not the boy you made out with at church camp. I just look like him, okay? <laughs> yeah, for extras, there's just uh, a couple other voice clips for, for getting caught Please by Aerith. Please don't let her hear me again. I'm surprised that it's like if you get caught too many times, she doesn't just like, you know, put a, a chair up against the door so that you can't open it anymore. <laughs> I mean, okay. Her, her mom doesn't want the heat of an ex-soldier uh, under their roof. I get yeah. that. 
her kids being hounded by special forces like the the bodyguard yeah. idea is not bad it's yeah it's not bad <laughs> it's like uh you hmm. jerk i thought i told you not to leave your room now get back in there okay Although uh, it's been a while since we recorded the an episode or two ago, but when we when we first got to Aerith's house, uh, her mom did say like in a, a normal kind of like chipper tone, like "Oh hey, Rude came by." <laughs> mm -hmm. So for some reason, Rude's okay. Reno ain't though. I'm not a bad person. I just have to do bad things sometimes because it's my job. No more games. <sighs> real noisy basket there that then disappeared yeah <laughs> she's got really good hearing she just has her ear pressed up against the door she's not going to sleep at all tonight 